Joining me now is John Torrey, Public Information Officer for Fairfax County Public Schools. Welcome. Good to be here, Barbara. Thank you. Well, um, we have the pleasure of working together mm -hmm. in the Department of Communications and Community Outreach, but we thought it was so important that we got your face uh, on Channel 21 um, because folks have seen you on occasion um, giving comment on the, mm -hmm. from the school system's perspective. But before we jump into what you do, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, for the past 20 years, I've been uh, doing communication work for variety of government agencies. Most recently, the last eight years, I was the head of a communications office for a county government in South Florida. I uh, came to Fairfax in March of this year, and I can say that you know the first six months have been uh, exciting, challenging, and entertaining, and usually all at once. <laughs> That's our line of work. Mm -hmm. we, no day is the same. Mm -hmm. Now, um, one of the things that we uh, surveyed our public about was um, trusted sources of information. Did that a year ago. We'll do another survey this fall. And um, we got some great results, interesting results. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw that parents primarily trusted FCPS, us, for their information about schools. And I think maybe more interesting, um, non-parents, those who didn't have children in the school system, trusted the Washington Post as a trusted source of information. So what do you make of all that? Well, I think you know, individuals that have a vested interest in the school system you know, are turning to the school system as their primary source of information. So that's one of the challenges we face, is to make sure that we are providing information, accurate information in a timely manner. We use a variety of um, uh, outlets to provide that information. We'll, on information right here on Channel 21. We use our website. We have our Facebook and Twitter pages. Uh, we also use our Keep in Touch messaging system. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of avenues that we use internally to get the message out. And then, of course, we'll also ask our partners in the, the commercial TV stations and radio stations to help us, particularly in, in an emergency or in a weather event or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. And um, tell, tell us a little bit about weather events and other crises, um, because I think that's probably one of the most important opportunities we have to build confidence and trust in our public. Well, I think we understand the implications of either uh, keeping school open on a bad weather day or delaying the start of school or even uh, making a decision to close school. You know, we have, um, you know, employees that are impacted. Obviously, mm -hmm. our students and parents are impacted. Mm -hmm. So there are a variety of things that are taken into consideration. You know, there are um, our employees and students generally uh, get to school in one of five ways. They'll either walk, they'll take a school bus, they'll drive themselves, parents will drive them to school, or students will drive other students. So these are some of the issues that we take mm -hmm. into consideration. And, you know, um, you know, school bus transportation is considered the safest form of transportation, mm -hmm. so it's rare for us to use that as the primary reason for making a decision as to whether to open or close schools. So we're thinking about students that may, teenagers that may have to drive in the early morning hours mm -hmm. on maybe on less than ideal conditions, or students that are walking to school or uh, perhaps you know, waiting for a school bus. So all of these are taken into consideration. Uh, you know, the goal is to make a decision by 4.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And many of our employees, our school bus drivers, mm -hmm. are out the door before 6 a.m. in the morning. So, you know, it's, it's, it's imperative that we make a decision early on. Obviously, it's the superintendent's call, but he'll take a variety of information uh, either from uh, our internally from our own people or from police agencies, the Virginia Department of Transportation, even the National Weather Service, and then arrive at a decision. And then it usually takes us about 20 minutes to get that information out through those um, sources that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And you know, again, the goal is to get that decision made by 4.30 and then start getting the information out, although you know, it could start snowing at 5.30, which right. complicates things. It does complicate things. It makes our life very interesting. Um, because we, every time we have a, a crisis or an incident, we do tend to have a debrief in, term, in, in our communications office. Can you share some of the lessons we've learned from those debriefs? Well, I think every crisis is unique. Some, you know, some crises are fast breaking. You know, others are slow building. Mm -hmm. You know, the Penn State issue sort of comes to mind about a slow building crisis. But I think there's some generally lessons learned in every crisis. Uh, but you know, overall, I think you know the the key points are that you want to get information out as quickly as you can, because mm -hmm. if we're not getting the information out, reporters and others will find information from other sources. You know, we're living in a 24/7 world. Everyone seems to have their own Twitter accounts these days. So. You know, there's a void there if if official information is not coming from us. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's also the issue of um, uh, you know getting that information out accurately and trying to get it out all at once. I think the idea of 
sort of dribbling out bad news is not exactly, uh, you know, the ideal, the ideal way of doing things. So I think those are just some things that generally, you know, you learn from crisis to crisis. Right. Now, tell us a little bit about um, media relations and how you work with the media. Well, on a day-to-day -day basis, I'll hear from reporters who are, uh, you know, generally what I consider asking for information that I, I consider to be routine or basic information about the school system. Or I might hear from a reporter who wants to do a profile piece on an individual or about one of our programs. Uh, so, you know, my job is essentially to try to help facilitate, you know, getting that, in, that reporter connected to the right person or information about the program. Uh, you know, we ha there are hot button issues that we deal with on it uh, oftentimes, and that will generate calls usually from media outlets that we don't normally hear from on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. But our job, our job is to, you know, manage the crisis as quickly as we can and move on without losing sight of our overall communication goals. You know, there are a lot of good stories in Fairfax schools, and I think we make a concerted effort and a good effort to get that information out. And, you know, some of those good news stories don't end up on the front page of the Washington Post. We recognize that. Mm -hmm. But there are a number of community newspapers in Fairfax that are interested in those kind of stories. And so, you know, we've seen, you know, in my short time here, I, I, I've been impressed by the fact that, you know, the community papers are involved in their communities. Mm -hmm. They're interested in the school system mm -hmm. and they will um, help publicize some of the good news stories because there are you know, there's, there's a good news story everywhere you turn at Fairfax. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for being here and sharing some of our good news about our communications office. Thank you.